Anyway, so um, Venerable Wu Ling has talked about the art of forgiveness with the story of a shopkeeper that um, was robbed by a very young man. He's very inexperienced from the looks of it. And the shopkeeper, instead of reacting aggressively, they are calm, they are doing their business. This thief just stole two phones from the shop into the bag, but they kind of like locked the, locked the um, shop gate. And the thief, because it's first time, he's like, okay, fine, I'll give it back to you. But instead of calling police to capture this um, young man, he just say, if you want to go, go, don't do it again. And this young man was, um, how to say, we didn't know about what happened to him afterwards, but what we can see from the behavior of the shopkeeper is, they are first very calm. They are not aggressive, uh, defending violence, because of course the thief is not violent as well maybe. But at the same time, he's able to um, use the teaching, he's a Muslim, he use the teaching of um, you know, Islam to guide himself which is the Dharma as well. He got himself with um, forgiveness. He who seeks mercy should give mercy to others as well. You know, if you want to be understood, you should make an attempt to understand others. If you want to be loved, you must make an attempt to love other people as well. So this is cause and effect. And this is not something um, that's very high in our reach. This is something you can do in your daily life. And sometimes we neglected that. So this is, another learning we can have. And I'm pretty sure Venerable Puna has used a lot of these examples to help everyone from all walks of life. Um, and Buddha has um, been very, very, very happy with his student Puna for you know, helping a lot of sentient beings into the door of Dharma. He helps thousands of people in that city. And everyone loves his talk because it just makes sense to them. It just speaks to their heart, to their um, wondering, I mean, to their wants, their needs, their troubles. So this is Sanjie, mm -hmm. you know, he the Fasu. He understands what sentient being needs and he used that word so, ever so wisely. Um, yeah. And then he's... Um, very strong sense of mission, and Buddha one day asked, "You, um, he asking for, oh yeah, we'll wait for, him. asking for permission." What should be done properly, like we mentioned, is uh, something that suits the hearts and minds of um, the listener. You know, who's the audience, and understand what they want. Really, really get to know them. Of course, you can't. If you have a thousand people coming to your talks, you can't just know every single one of them personally. But you kind of have an understanding of the audience and then able to try, uh, maybe in this community of farmers, community of fishmongers, you know, or communities of um, government officials, right? So he also mentioned to a police, uh, laws of the country can punish the people who make crimes, but can they prevent people from committing crime? Mm He's -hmm. like, oh, Venerable Puna, no one, no laws of any world can prevent a crime. And so he's like, yes, combining with the laws of the country, we also need to combine the teachings of the Buddha and the five precepts and the, you know, cause and effect. It's very important, cause and effect. Well, he always mentioned cause and effect in his teaching. So that's why Buddha start with karma. Mm -hmm. And every time he talk about a story, right? This past life is me. The other past life is Devadatta. You know, uh, in this past life, I was a very honest merchant. Devadatta was a merchant that trying to take advantage of people. That is not right for him to take. And he did not like me because I um, honestly, you know, report the numbers to the buyer so that they can get what they pay for fairly, blah, blah, blah. And this is my karma with him in the past. So now he treats me like this because he always thinks that I'm uh, up one up him where I never even talk about trying to compete or anything uh, so his karma is he always feel jealousy towards me my karma is now I become Buddha I'm uh, how to say I'm spreading the teachings to everyone um, so stuff like that and 
And then these are re realistic stuff as well. Everyone in the Sangha always walk to him, ask him, how do you make missionary goals well? Or most of them, they just sit in a group and they're not interacting with the outside world, only in the Sangha. They're not even going out to the cities, you know, to the, to the suburbs. And Venerable Puna will walk to them and sit down next to him and say, um, Venerable, dear Venerables, you, sh you guys should go out, interact with the people. That's how the Buddha Dharma gets spread, instead of sitting here and not interacting. You know, this is not the goal of Buddha you know, uh, teaching. Yes, you need to help yourself to cultivate meditative tranquility. That is because you want to help other beings. Um, and then they all complain about the, not complain, they all express the difficulties. And it's really difficult as well, right? Sometimes people just don't listen to you. They're being rude, they're being, um, how to say, unattentive, they're not, they're not there. And then when you talk about this, it's like you're talking to a wall. So there's a lot of like problems they mentioned, you know, but he did not go and say, oh, you do this, this, this and that. He just say very short and brief sentence. We're here because of Buddha. We're grateful for him. We're grateful for his teaching. We're grateful for his examples. And because of that, no matter how difficult the situation is, we should go ahead and do it. And we should do, we should do it as, to the best we can. You know, the problem is not doing. And it's not whether there is a result or not. You know, Buddhism is not always trying to say, Buddhism is about, how to say, your attitudes. It's not about when is it going to come in fruition. Just keep planting the crops, put the right condition to the crops, water it, fertilize it. Do not ask for any results. If you have that sense of, oh, if I do this, I get this, 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 that, that, that. Chances are it might not become exactly as you thought. It will be different because there's so many conditions you cannot understand. Mm -hmm. And if you use the, you know, the, the seven sense and six sense, you only get a very limited scope. People who tap into their um, Buddha nature, they see everything. They don't even need to think about it. So that's why you go towards enlightenment instead of drill a hole, drill a hole and trying to pick your mind. Mind is a tool. Right, we need it, but we cannot be bound by it. So I don't want to go too far because his attitude in teaching is, um, how to say, every time he went to a place, he he able to make everyone felt like they got, he got me, you know, this guy got me, this venerable got me. What he says is exactly what I'm thinking. He articulate my thoughts, he articulate my heart, right? and then he always have a way to get me into, you know, that peaceful place in my heart. That's where a skillful preacher is. And I'm pretty sure uh, Venerable Purnad is not trying to do something. He's just simply have a heart of, I want to know the people. I want to help them, you know, alleviate their troubles. That's all he think about. And then the method he goes about is refined over time. And of course, he attain other hunt which helps him a lot in not getting trapped into his emotions and you know, angers. He treat me like this, he, he beat me like this. Uh, I, I feel angry. When you get all worked up, you can't see why that person is doing that. And hence, you can't solve that relationship. Because, you, if, it's, because if we react habitually, we end up making it worse, right? So that's something we cultivate on. Like, how do we continue to remain calm even though something really bad happened to you. That mindset, like what he has, right, is, uh, is very important. Um, there's one important part of his um, life is when he's going to preach in a place called Sudana, Buddha was like, ah, uh, Puna, this is very dangerous for you. That place is very un uncivilized. People are very rude. They, they haven't heard of any teachings before. Um, you might be threatened there, you know. So, Puna was like, it's fine, I will still go there regardless. That's my mission. He has a strong sense of mission. And when he talked to um, the Buddha, and then he replied, say, that's what you treat us with. You treat me with love and respect, all right? I want to do the same for other people. And this is my gratitude towards your teaching. He, so he gets it, he felt the love and care from the Buddha, he wanted to pass on. 
I'm willing to give up my everything to the Dharma. No, everything. My life, all the things are tied up to the Dharma. So, um, Sudana is a place that really needs the Dharma because they are uncivilized. Because they are having so much, you know, troubles in um, the society there. This is why I need to be there. Right? If you go to a place where it's established, everyone is nice and kind. The Dharma is easily accepted there. No difficulties. Easy. But because that place has so much trouble, that's why I was needed there. That's why you can see in place of war, war-torn countries or poverty countries, there's a lot of missionaries. Of all religions go there, especially like Christians and you know some of Islamic missionaries, because that is a dry place. And person who has dharma or who has a teaching of heart is like water. Water always go to a dry place, and. He has that gratitude. That's very important. Is he able to take this difficulty as nutrient instead of punishment? And so Buddha did not just let him go like that. He's trying to test his resolution. So he also want to show to everyone what kind of a、um, person, what kind of person has the right quality to be a preacher, because he was known as、uh, preeminence in preaching. So far, the ima. First thing is. Well, Puna, what if the people of Sudan are refuse to accept your teaching and scold you instead? And then he's like, "That doesn't matter because they won't be that awful." You know, he he does not take it to heart. And then, what if they attack you with punches, kicks, and stones? You know, and he's like, "As long as they didn't kill me, as long as they didn't carry knife or gun, you know, era, that's fine."、Uh, what if they injure you with knife or gun? It doesn't matter if, because they are still human enough that they did not kill me. So he sees good in the people. And then, what if they kill you? That's real stuff, right? When you go to like Israel, when you go to Hamas, you know the Gaza area, people ask you, "Why do you want to go there? Why do you want to go to that?" Most of us don't want to go there because it's a war-torn place, right? If you have no connection to that place, why would you go there? Of course. Uh, everyone has different answers. No answer is wrong. I want to protect myself. I want, you know, I don't, I don't want to cause trouble. But for him, because he already has nourished by the Dharma, he already attained Arahant. Life and death is not a hundred percent problem. Even for us who have not attained Arahant, but if your view is very strong enough, right? If you have a very strong, clear sense of purpose, people there actually need the Dharma. I sense that they need the, the Dharma. Very much. I have made my observations. They really need it, and I will be able to bring a lot of positive impact to that place. So he's not just 一腔热情去到那边什么都没有 He already has. He's not just pure passion. He has wisdom. He has made assessment. He say that this place actually can be thought. You know, there is qualities in them that I really want to bring out. The good one. Emphasize on the good one. So. You also need to do assessment before you go to a country and do that.、Um, in real life example, we have a place in Africa.、Um, it's not done under directly under Master Ching Kong. It's one of the venerable. He went to Africa and co- created a.、Um, I think it's inside South Africa. There's a country, independent kingdom.、Um, this Chinese Taiwanese Chinese monk went to、um, the place and built. A temple, and in that temple, he takes care of all the orphans of the country, you know, African orphans, to there and teach them in Zhao Ke Wan Ke, all the teachings that we learn here. He exactly bring it to them, teach them Kung Fu, teach them tea tea ceremony, you know, 全部中华文化的东西 Chinese culture stuff. So let them have a sense of culture. At the same time, they teach them modern knowledge, science, mathematics, you know. Um, drawings, art, so he gives them hope. Why a place is war torn? Why a place is、um, full of crime and delinquent? You know, people are not、uh, doing anything productive. It's because they have no hope. They can't see anything from their environment to get out. So what they can do? Resort to the most basic, primal part of human nature. Fight or flight. You know, you either rob or you get robbed. You either kill or get killed. If world is going to that level, that's the worst. That 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 world, no one wants to live, right? 
And to avoid that problem, we have many examples throughout the world, right? In Chinese history, we have Confucius teaching about, you know, you need to restrain yourself, blah, blah, blah. And then Taoists talk about, you know, we need to understand, you know, karma, you know, uh, uh, how to say, help people in need when, when the timing is right. In Buddhism, we talk about saving all sentient beings. They are all morals and moralities, not because to constrain you, it's to make everyone not killing each other when they meet. Um, so those are the those are the importance of missionaries. Understand this point, only then you go to that country and actually teach them. It works because you actually understand what they need. Instead of, oh, I'm a mission from you know God or some deities, I'm holy than thou, like you know those kind of attitudes, and those are mixed. It will not be clear cut, or these people are purely good missionaries, or these people are rotten apples. There will always be people with that mindset. So it's just how you treat people. If you treat them with respect, despite their appearance, despite their race, despite their conditions, you nourish them like your own son, your own daughter, then of course they will come back to you. Even though you die maybe in the process, in a war torn, right? You might get stray bullets to your head. But knowing karma, how bad would would your next life be? No. And your family will be taken care of by, if not the country, by the whole communities. Right? There's a lot of beautiful stories as well from, like, I watched from those videos in China, right? It's just taking care of each other. Like, if you're willing to give yourself to the world in your own capacity, the world will come back to you tenfold. You know, a drop of gratitude. I receive nourish from other people. I'll use ten times the gratitude to pay back. But what we should not do is that's that's ten times the suffering, right? So yeah, this way we already bring to this way, you know, earn people's gratitude we always remember in our heart. People's grudge, you know, people's um, wrongdoing towards us, we should quickly forget it as soon as possible. So to finish off this one, he already, uh, Buddha mentioned the missionaries, because they already show like Puna is the perfect example of preacher. So now he's categorizing it in 10 qualities that Puna has. To be a missionary, to be someone who spread the Dharma, we can look at Master Ching Kong as well. He's a real life example. I mean, he's the closest example we have. First thing is knowing the Dharma. Of course, you have to know your stuff to preach, right? Um, second is knowing how to communicate, how to preach. Third one is virtue of fearlessness with the public. You cannot be you know, too shy to talk. You need to be there, a present. You need to establish a present to the public. This is me. I am the standard for the Dharma behind me. Thousands of Buddha behind me. And then third one is debating. Yeah. It's a Chinese word, Taikang, like, you know, people who likes to find, you know, debates and anything. You need to have that fear, fearlessness, like, I know my Dharma, I practice it, I walk through this, I might not know everything, but I have faith. And then, let them, let them come. So, Master Ching Kong always have Q&A. That's not argument as well. Sometimes they just ask the question based on their understanding. You know, when we learn the Dharma, we look at it, we're like, why would a person ask like that? Um, I can bring up a few examples next week, but some of them, they ask that because they don't know any, anything else. And then Master Ching Kong always have a way to navigate through that questions, difficult questions, and bring it back to the point. You know, um, Virtual of tactful preaching. So you cannot say something like that or very, very, um, well, what worldly people think of unlucky in nature to someone who just married. You know, you don't say something like, oh, everyone has life and death to someone who just, you know, um, married or just born. You went to, like, maybe you're a monk, you, you'd be invited to someone's uh, uh, wedding or someone's birth shower, you know, man yue jiu. How do you say baby shower mm -hmm. ceremony? And then you go tell them, oh, there is life and death, you know, there's <laughs> karma. <laughs> it's not wrong. Mm -hmm. Nothing's wrong with that. But not the right time. <laughs> people are like, you know, like what? Like, 
I, I was here just to, you know, hopefully you can bless us with your, you know, lucky words. At the same time, he may he can use something else. He can use like, this child is so beautiful, so beautiful, right? So 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 cute, so so cute, so smart. So you know you should, you know, um, teach him to learn more about uh, you know, uh, how to be kind to his siblings, mm-hmm. you know, kind towards his friends. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe he could uh, you can uh, bring him, um, share you know, tell, teach him how to share his toys with his with his, with his siblings. You know those tactful. You know you use it in the right way. Mm. Of course, number six, he is the gatekeeper of the Dharma. So many, just the father. So many. Of course, he has to obey the Dharma. You know the the worst thing is the police that breaks the law, right? The doctors that breach the oath of Hippocrates, right? You cannot just bu you. No matter how bad the the patient is, your first priority is to save. The patient, because that's that's your oath when you sworn in as a doctor, the lawyer. You, of course, there's a lot of things. Lawyer are not necessary defenders of justice. They sometimes do it for money, but if a proper guided lawyer, you know, the heart in the right place, they will always put, you know, justice balance with their interests, their monetary interests, you know, having clients. Um, so seven is virtue of processing dignity. What is that? Having a dignity does not mean like you know I'm higher or anything. It's able to have a self-respect, you know, carry yourself well. Like in company, right? You need to carry yourself in a certain way to represent your company behind you. In Dharma, same thing. As a monk, even as a lay Buddhist, well, there's a certain standard we should carry ourselves if we want to be seen as a proper student of the Dharma. You know, we can't just walk around and swear or walk around and mutter. You know, ugly words like that. It's it's un it's distasteful to ourselves. It's distasteful to others. I'm saying that because I myself also mutter a lot of ugly words. Um, but there are time and like I'm not going to justify my action. So this is something I need to fix. Okay. Um, so having dignity, you know, it's 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 confidence. It brings confidence of people towards your dharma or your company. You can apply to anywhere. Um, Zealous progress. You always want to f- seek, you know, uh, advancement, growth in the area. I always want to. It's kind of like that explore, explorer mindset, right? Missionary is literally going to the front, you know, to this um, place that is not developed and develop it. So you want to develop a certain culture in the area. So you need to understand their original culture. You need to be part of them. So whenever Puna went to Sudan, speak their tongue, understand their problem. Eat what they eat, sleep where they sleep. You know, people are still very towards them. But oh yeah, this is real example. He went there. He understand Buddha Dharma does not apply. Uh, cannot apply like that. So say if you came from New York or came from Sydney, all this everyone's already established to a very far edges of the world where the people can't even eat and sleep properly. You know. You t- talk to them and say, "Oh, you have to be compassionate. You have to be kind. Uh, you need to practice giving." They were, they were already starving. So your first job is to save them from being starved, to help them to treat their wounds, teach them medical knowledge, teach them farming so that they don't starve, teach them art of commerce so that they can trade at least a little bit, have economy in the area, and then you then talk to them about karma. Oh, cause and cause and effect can be used as well. If you do that, you will lose it. And then slowly you build up that confidence, uh, the 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 basic necessities, and then the confidence. So this is a lot of missionaries' job. Go there, establish clean water supplies, clean um, technologies, and then economy as well. You know how to trade, and then also a support group that helps them to export their goods and get right profit for them. So those are very realistic stuff. In Confucius teaching, same thing. You need to teach the rules. I don't know the actual words. I, I remember that very clearly because I really like it. You need to make sure they have food, they have shelter before you teach them about, you know, being courtesy, being kind. You know. All right, so I'm gonna finish with the last two. Which of tirelessness, 不倦，骄而不厌，回而不倦。You know, you 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 may be tired, you may be fatigued, but your heart cannot be tired. 
your heart should not be fatigued. And that means you need to align yourself first. Why do you do this in the first place? I'm very thankful for the person behind me, Buddha or Master Ching Kong or anyone that inspired you to do this. I'm there. I'm here because of him or her. You know, him or her gave me this hope. I need to pass on no matter how tired I am. Last one is power in success. You know, you have that. You have the strong determination this will work. Even I die. Uh, this will precede me. People, right people will come and then they will pass on. Like the master Bodhidharma, Bodhi, Bodhidharma. The Zen Buddhism does not just suddenly become famous in China. This takes six generations of monks before Huinan express it. And then Huinan needs to survive 15 years of being hunted. So first generation is Bodhidharma. He's been sitting there in Shaolin Temple for nine years in front of a wall. And only then he got one, one student to come to him. And then that's it. And then he also needs to be waiting in his own time, planting or whatever, doing, doing the daily stuff to survive, only to pass on to another student. He does not even think, when? When will he be famous? You know, he doesn't have this agitation. He's just doing his job. He know that when condition is right, they will come. And then he passed on until six generations. So from, from post three kingdom, all the way to Tang Dynasty, 600 years. Only then Tang Dynasty, only then he has the right condition because Tang Dynasty is a unified country. You know, there is a law and order. People can feed themselves relatively well. And he also have a, you know, right teachers and then he received the Dharma. He have to read, meet the right person to understand that this guy actually knows his stuff and then bring him to the fifth patriarch and he got enlightened. Then he also need to overcome the jealousy and misunderstanding of other brothers and sisters in Dharma. So 15 years inside a hunting group, then he walks and by any chance met someone in the, in the temple and then someone who actually read a lot of sutras but have not fully enlightened yet so those conditions are so miraculous that we can't even predict it in our mind the book is book of but he knew one day it was success he's not losing faith he's not defeated so yeah so these are these are amazing um stories of um Purna and what he told us and Purna, right he always know what when is the right time to talk and then he teach the right kind of knowledge to them like in sudana once he finished the farming technologies and the uh medical technologies so teach these two knowledge you can eat and then when you're sick you have a way to treat yourself and then he also teach them how to you know advance their architecture and stuff like that then at night time when everyone's like having a drink he talk about dumb of cause and effect all right um and then he have 500 people imagine you get 500 students in a place where no one knows what is buddha dhamma no one knows what is being kind to each other means no one knows what is um, self-restraint means that place is like say somali or some area that full of um criminals maybe so yeah that's it that's it for today <laughs> It's already 3.46. Um, thank you for coming. Mm -hmm.